you to the community for coming out and supporting Bookstock because I think every time our community gets together, we're stronger. So sit back, enjoy, and somebody's going to come up here and perform. Well, oh, look at those lights. They're really strong. Um, good evening. Uh, welcome to Saturday evening at the 10th. Count them, the 10th annual Bookstock, I know, fantastic. <laughs> My name's Jordan Engel. I'm the coordinator for Bookstock. I took over a couple years ago from Ron Miller, who, and who took over from Peter Romanier. So we've sort of evolved over the last 10 years. Um, there's so many people to thank f uh, for uh, helping to put on a festival like this. Um, and although the list is, is, it may take me a minute to get through, I think we have so few opportunities to recognize the businesses and the organizations that um, help make Bookstock happen that I'm going to actually read the whole list because I think these people have provided wonderful support to make it happen. So the area businesses uh, that have um, uh, helped us are the Ardmore Inn, the Charleston House, the Woodstocker B&B, the Deerbrook Inn, the Maple Leaf Inn, uh, Fan House uh, and Bentley's Restaurant, and uh, the organizations that have contributed uh, space, time, people, uh, the Norman Williams Public Library, the Woodstock Historical Society, um, Artistry uh, in South Pomfret, the, uh, the North Universalist Chapel Society, St. James Episcopal Church, Marsh Billings, Rockefeller National Historic Park, the Thompson Senior Center, Pentangle Arts, Change the World Kids, Congregation Cheer Shalom, Zach's Place, uh, the Woodstock Masonic Lodge, and the Ottaquichi Health Foundation. All these, uh, there's lists on the back of the program, and perhaps you've seen it already. Uh, one of the contributors that um, didn't uh, get in, uh, make it in time to make it on the program, we got a generous grant from the town of Woodstock through the Ed, uh, Economic Development Fund. We just heard about that about a week ago, so we thank uh, the Town of Woodstock and the Economic Development Fund. Um, Bookstock began uh, 10 years ago with a Friday evening uh, keynote address by Reeve Lindbergh, who interestingly uh, presented a new book during this Bookstock. Um, it was followed on Saturday by 14 author poet readings. Uh, then it was a book sale, there were children's activities under a tent in front of the elementary school. We have close to 40 presentations now. Uh, Woodstock, Bookstock takes over the green. I mean, you've seen that all today. Bookstock has grown immensely. Um, I sort of describe it. Uh, it started out 10 years ago as a very wet snowball, small wet snowball at the top of a very steep hill. And as it rolled down the hill, it just picked up things along the way. It picked up people and volunteers and organizations until right now, it's just this great big snowball that, that puts on a wonderful festival. Um, I'd like to recognize the people who created Bookstock, um, oh, those many years ago. Some of you are here. Some of you um, are too, <laughs> too tired to have come tonight because of all the work you're still doing. Um, Jenny Shirtliff, Partridge Boswell, Peter Romanier, Lynn Peterson, Rick Fisk, uh, Susan Morgan, um, Michael Stoner was part of the original group. He poo-pooed the original name for the festival, which was Wordstock. And Michael got on his computer and discovered that there was already a Wordstock literary festival in Portland, Oregon. So he said, well, what about Bookstock? And of course, um, that name stuck. If I've left out anyone, if there's anyone in here, if I've left out anyone who was there in the original group, because I wasn't, um, I mean, yell out your name or yell out their name or let me know at some point. We do want to try to document some of this. Um, so Bookstock, it's a gift that the organizing committee, uh, volunteers and local organizations um, give to Woodstock every summer. It's some people in our community run for office and some people um, do fundraising. Uh, our gift, the people, uh, those of us who, who organize Bookstock, um, love books and love literature and uh, this is a way for us to give something back to a community. 
So um, the concert tonight, oh, just a couple housekeeping things. There will be a short intermission after uh, Los Lorcas play. Uh, and at the end of the concert, um, you can buy books in the lobby. And then um, Robert Pinsky will be here. You can come back into the house if you want to get the books signed by, um, by Robert Pinsky. So um, the concert tonight will open with Los Lorcas, who uh, is a trio of Woodstockians, Woodstockers, Woodstockites. Um, Partridge Boswell, Peter Money, and uh, Nat Williams fuse poetry and music in a passionate and surprising matchup. So, um, Los Lorcas, donde es Los Lorcas? Here they are. Ah, gracias. Buenas noches. And happy Bookstock. Everybody having a good day? Yeah. Good day here at Bookstock? All right. We are too. Glad to be here.
Thanks very much. We're delighted to be uh, here tonight, especially thrilled to be part of uh, this concert featuring a really amazing confluence of poetry and music with Robert Pinsky's poem, Jazz. You're, you guys are in for a treat. I can't wait for that. So. Uh, you may have recognized some lyrics in there from William Butler Yeats. It's Lake Island and Venice Free. We are going to travel now from Venice Free on down to southern Spain, to Andalusia, to the Vega of Andalusia, with, uh, with some help from another one of our poetic heroes, Federico Garcia Lorca. All right. And, uh, and in honor of what I think is a full moon tonight, pretty close, I'd like to do this one. It's called The Moon Rises. La luna asoma. Cuando sale la luna, se pierden las campanas y aparecen las sendas impenetrables. Cuando sale la luna, el mar cubre la tierra y el corazón se siente isla en el infinito. Nadie come naranas bajo la luna llena. Es preciso comer fruta verde y helada. Cuando sale la luna, de cien rostros iguales, la moneda de plata soyosa en el bolsillo. Could I leave you here? Turn and walk away into the Vega, burning on the edge of night. How did we ever 
never grow so old Making our way across the vega To pick the bitter part of tree Born of a hundred faces Your dreaming footsteps disappear How could you leave us here? Turn and walk away On the edge of night Tell them my eyes stayed open That I went to my star without breath Tell them I'm standing out in the open Waiting for the first boy Thank you. This is called All the Little Losses. probably remember last spring when it was still winter. Well, the losses pile up like change. And you use it against your will like time as the snow falls down on the daffodils, covering spring itself. Like a sheet you did not want to see or feel. The scrim blades stick through sheaths of grass like second life. Again, a word left on high while we avoid the shroud. If it's only a page that will be unwritten, swirl in the figurative changes to squall. And we who are human wail as if the weather is about something else. It is. It is about papers 
the past due, the hurry, hurry, the hurdy-gurdy of our lungs, beyond skid and accident, beyond natural death, age, cancer, language formed by lips and tongues, sound resonating, moaning from the cave of the forming seed. We who survived, or we who gave away, whisper and hand in goodbye. Well, along comes time again, and you are there. Ten branches inked with the ash of the fallen, and goodbye just turned to hello as you stand looking at snow, again snow, something light as sheets. Some fall down, only to roll off the roof. We never know what happens to them. Others are stuck for days, upside down, in the shower's one remaining puddle. Their wings, windsurfer sails, caught flat under a soft veil of sea. And when I approach, their threads for legs twitch and spin, really like a baby being diapered. There, there now, I begin. And I slip the wedge of something found under their bodies instantly. They're agile, they grip, unless they're dead. 
what's possible again. As if they hadn't lain there for two days modeling for a poem about Emily Dickinson. And although it is cold where I free them, as if feeding minuscule birds through a disintegrating, great, disintegrating, disintegrating, disintegrating cage, each by each, they find a chip of lethal paint along the windowsill outside and cling to it until they regain their wit to fight for flight. First, feeling a direction, then becoming supreme, and in a second, powering their way across the yard. Sure, a little dazed, wouldn't you be? At which point in time, they care not to be seen. Probably, I suspect, out of embarrassment. But even if I were not alone saving flies, as morning lightens the empty house, I would be one of them. Honestly, I admire what they have done. Trapped by the smell of something attractive, beaten by the lure of screen, whose tiny crossbars look like hatch patterns of hundreds like them, if just their skeletons. They rise, yes, sometimes needing help, from being dead in the water skunked sputum, a desirable, velvety lethargy of drunkenness, wet sarcophagi of what remains of effort in oncoming winter, boasting a resilience stored and called upon that not even their tribe knew. Because who has time to be sentimental anymore? Someone must be a monk to the least among us. Baby the language with fingers instead of forks. And I did it because they cried out by being silent. And I forgave them after they'd been annoying and numerous during certain weeks of summer, autumn, winter, and spring. And I believed it was worth it because what is time if not for saving something? And because I can imagine that fly, my enemy, bereft, defiant, equally trying to get away, equally hungry. Thank you, Nat Williams, Partridge Boswell. Thank you. This next poem goes back a few years, takes place in New York City. But I think it resonates today, too. It's called Behind Me I Can Hear Them Talking. Uh, be it behind us or on Twitter, we hear them talking. Behind me, I can hear them talking. He's complaining to her. He's saying, you can't even walk. That there are too many people, he says. I wish a disease would come and wipe out half the people. In a kind of and monotone type of voice and I look at him walking walking steadily he and she 
without stumbling as though through a field, side by side, in synchronicity. And I call out to him as he's moving ahead of me. Would you be one of them? But he doesn't hear me, or it doesn't matter. He was moving just fine. Maybe a bad day. Maybe a bad day. But I'm left standing in front of the Woolworth entrance, staring at him and wondering what half he thinks he belongs to. And what half do I belong to? to the lady in pink standing on top of the bridge space to move, a rescue. Headlights deaden my cabbie's face as he turns toward me, enigmatic, and so the cop back on the PA shouts, cabbie, use your brains, now move! And we must all be fools on this bridge tonight. Lady, the light sent to get you, pink, standing. Will you die while the cops follow their eyes upon your figure? Do you use the opportunity as your church? Do you wish this scene gone? Shout, I found my God, now leave me alone. All the fuss for your standing. The dispatcher over the cab radio announces, all cars stay clear of the Brooklyn Bridge. They got a jumper. And to the cabbie, I say, did it look like she was going to jump? We roll down the ramp to Brooklyn, and my cabbie says, maybe, maybe in the river. His eyes are mostly white, so wide I turn to watch a pin drop, see it leap to night sky, but Manhattan's yellow night glow doesn't catch her. And immediately after feeling that close to the jumper, I was stunned, no longer excited by passing death. Courage, if only in a car. Maybe her life is saved. Or maybe the cops look down, no longer coaxing the dead to live. Oh, lady, 
Oh lady, the lights behind me say hurry. Thanks very much. We've got a couple more for you. Here's one you may have caught at last night's Poetry Slam. May have sounded a little bit different there, though. This is called Ode to My Dap. And if you don't know what Dap is, well, let's just say it's a, a customary greeting between two people. Share will help 
get my head around how the zoo were caged in. Not only caged us apart, but labeled the cages around our hearts in Latin. As I get my dad down so much. We've got one more for you, and then we're all in for some fun. You ready for Robert Pinsky's poem, Jess? Yeah, it's going to be quite a trip. Right. It's been a real pleasure to play, play for you tonight uh, and be part of Bookstock in this uh, 10th anniversary celebration. So just want to say thanks, Pentangle, Thanks to Alita and Seth and everybody here at Pentangle for having us, for being such a wonderful, reliable venue year after year for Bookstock also. And thanks uh, to the organizers of Bookstock for inviting us to play. Real pleasure, thank you. First, I ought to, I'll just let you know. This is on guitar. This is Nat Williams. In case you don't know him. And over here on uh, vocals, an Appalachian strumstick, and the beatbox. We have Peter Money. Oil dank bowels 
Saturday morning's acolyte Sleep dazed but arrived Straight for the ramp you built last night In your driveway In homage to the great adrenaline-hazed Evil Knievel Archetype for every danger boy And bone-headed troglodyte Bent on a bright schematic Vying to break more bones Than the Guinness World Flying prone over cars, buses, lions, fountains, sharks, canyons, rattlesnakes Before the neighborhood wakes Topping the slope, you wrap your banana bike and pedal hard on the approach Past the hushed gang of squirrels and robins holding their breath Hoping this levitation will and won't be your last. Did he always wear stars and stripes? Was his helmet screwed on tight? Will his next attempt be televised? If he succeeds and fails yet again to reach the light. Devil dared and fair warned You, rocket as advertised Off a wood plank Sailing headlong Over Fame's Coliseum Into your first kiss And beer and Eucharist Your first dorm room farewell First rock concert at the Orpheum. Your body's first chemistry experiments. And first storm of contrite indignation shattering your first arrest. Your first born silence like a warm ghost. Your island that formed in a widening ocean. When your first greyhound Pulled away from the curve Taking a friend more than a friend Inevitable As the first long days that follow Soaring through every stunt since Angling for the abyss Realizing too late your trajectory is off by an inch And this is going to hurt You brace yourself for that embrace Thanks very much. Have a great night.
antique. I drowned in the fire. I drowned in the fire of having you. I drowned in the fire of having you. I burned, I burned in the river of not having you. I drowned in the fire of having you. I burned in the river of not having you. We lived together for hours in a house of a thousand rooms. We lived together for hours in a house of a thousand rooms and we were parted for a thousand years. Ten minutes ago, ten minutes ago, we raised our children. They cover the earth. They cover the earth and they have forgotten that we existed. I drowned in the fire of having you. I burned in the river of not having you. And it was not the worldly illusion of Maya. It was certainly not a ladder to perfection. It was this cold sunlight falling on this warm earth. the battle I followed you I followed you and lost the world without regret without regret but with stormy recriminations someday someday far down that corridor of horror the future Someday, far down that corridor of horror, the future. Somebody will buy this. My picture of you. Somebody will buy this. My picture of you. For the frame. At a stall in a dwindled city and studying your face, studying your face, that person will decide to harbor it a little while longer from the waters of anonymity and the acids of breath because I burned in the river of not having you and I drowned in the fire of having you. I drowned in the fire of having you. I burned in the river of not having you. Someday somebody will buy this, my picture of you, for the frame, at a stall in a dwindled city. And that person will decide to harbor your face, 
a little while longer from the waters of anonymity and the acids of breath. Thanks so much, I'm Robert Pinsky, and I'm honored to play with the great Stan Strickland. And thanks to Stan, I have now met and I'm getting to play with Steve Hunter. Mm. Steve Hunt. Huh? Steve Hunt, I told you I just met him. Steve Hunt, and he's going to change it to Hunter now as a stage thing. Um, the, next, the next thing we're going to do is called Street Music. Uh, it's, uh, it's based on taking the idea of reincarnation a little more seriously than uh, one normally does. It's the idea of previous lives. And to some extent, we have a previous life here just in the technology we're using that we got from the dead and it survives and musical instruments and so forth. The poem takes that a little more seriously in thinking about the idea of what your previous lives are. And of course, all lives are previous to us and they affect us. and bars of the old stone station to find yourself back in the bronze ordinary afternoon light to find yourself back behind that real city and inside this other city this other city where you slept in the street your bare feet gray tunic of a child, your bare feet, gray tunic of a child, you slept in the street, coarse sugar of memory. Salt 
Nineveh of barrows and stalls. The barber with his copper bowl. Beggars and grain sellers. The alley of the writers of letters in different dialects. Stands of the ear cleaner. Tailor. Spicer. The reign of Ashur Banipal. Hemp woman. Whore merchant. Hand porter. Errand boy. Child sold from a doorway. Child sold from a doorway. Your bare feet. Coarse sugar of memory. Salt Nineveh of barrows and stalls. Candy Memphis of exile and hungers. Exiles and hungers, honey calends and drays, syrup sellers and sicknesses, rooms, donkeys, tunes, yams, tunes on the mouth harp, shuffles and rags, healer, dealer, drunkard, fresh water, sewage. Wherever you died in the city, sometimes your soul flies up out of you, hunting for buried cakes here in the city. Coarse sugar of memory, salt Nineveh of barrows and stalls, gray tunic of a child, hand porter, hemp woman, whore merchant, the writer of different delclecs in alleys. Reign of Asher Banipal, salt Nineveh of carols, trays, shuffles, and rags. Candy Memphis of exiles and hungers, honey calends and trays. Your bare feet, wherever you died in the market, sometimes your soul flies up out of you, hunting for buried cakes here in the city. Candy Memphis of exiles and hungers. Salt Nineveh of barrows and stalls, coarse sugar of memory. To give you some idea of how we uh, think of what we're doing, um, I'm going to read a, a poem written in the late 16th century by the great poet Ben Johnson. Johnson, I think, wrote the best ear candy of anyone. Of course, his contemporary Shakespeare had a bigger imagination, but nobody wrote more sweetly than Johnson. And uh, I'll say the poem for you first a cappella. And then we'll show you what we do when we put these poems together with music. Um, here's Ben Jonson's poem, His Excuse for Loving. 
Let it not your wonder move, less your laughter that I love. Though I now write fifty years, I have and have my peers. Poets are human, not divine. Some have loved as old again. And it isn't always face, clothes, or fortune gives the grace, or the feature, or the youth. But the language and the truth with the ardor and the passion gives the lover weight and fashion. In this great second sentence, it's two sentence poem. If you then would hear the story, first prepare you to be sorry that you never knew till now either whom to love or how, but be glad along with me when you learn that this is she of whose beauty it was sung, she shall make the old man young, keep the middle age at stay, and let nothing high decay till she be the reason why all the world for love may die. And that's that's like some great extended melodic phrase in Charlie Parker or in Mozart or something. Um, I'll steal from the musical idiom. I'll do a reprise. I'll say that second sentence again, and then uh, the three of us will do it together. But just listen to the way the grammar is like a very intricate melody. And he's writing in, those, he's writing in the meter of twinkle, twinkle, little star. But he's making it sound like he's just talking to you. If you then would hear this story, first prepare you to be sorry that you never knew till now either whom to love or how, but be glad along with me when you learn that this is she, of whose beauty it was sung, she shall make the old man young, keep the middle age at stay, and let nothing high decay, till she be the reason why all the world for love may die. <laughs> Let it not your wonder move, bless your laughter that I love. Though I now write fifty years, I have had and have my peers. Poets are human, not divine. Some have loved as old again. And it isn't always face, clothes, or fortune. Or the feature or the youth. But the language and the truth. With the ardor and the passion that gives the lover weight and fashion. If you then would read this story, first prepare you to be sorry that you never knew till now either whom to love or how. But be glad along with me 
When you learn that this is she of whose beauty it was sung, she shall make the old man young, keep the middle age at stay, and let nothing high decay till she be the reason why all the world for love may die. If you then would read this story, first prepare you to be sorry that you never knew till now either whom to love or how. But be glad along with me when you learn that this is she of whose beauty it was sung. She shall make the old man young, keep the middle age at stay, and let nothing high decay till she be the reason why all the world may love for die. Be glad as soon with me when you learn that this is she, of whose beauty it was sung. She shall make the old man young. Keep the middle age at stay. And let nothing hide decay. Till she be the reason why. All the world for love may die. Thanks. The saxophone for me is a very important symbol of culture. Um, it was invented in Paris in the 19th century by a Belgian man named Sax, Adolf Sax. His name is on some Belgian banknotes. One of my friends sent me a, a banknote with a picture of Sax and his saxophone on it. Uh, you would say that makes it a European instrument, except we know it's not. It's an American instrument. Um, why and how? It was made so by geniuses in one generation, Johnny Hodges, Lester Young, Coleman Hawkins, later generations, Charlie Parker, John Coltrane, and so forth. They made it their instrument. And for me, that is a summation of what culture is. It's something you have the opportunity to make it your instrument. This is not the poem. This is the traditional poetry reading chatter about the poem. Um, the poem is called Ginza Samba, and of course the history of the saxophone, like the history of everything, if you want to the history of microphones, uh, everything has beauty and horror in it. You know, I just named people who are descended from Africans who were kidnapped and made slaves, and then they gave us jazz. And uh, we. The history of anything is endless and endlessly admirable and deplorable, horrible. Um, the, poem, the poem tries to understand a little tiny bit of that. Ginza Samba. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
a monosyllabic European, a monosyllabic European named Sax invents a horn. Walla whirlidi wa. A kind of brazen, twisted clarinet. A kind of brazen, twisted clarinet, but with its column of vibrating air shaped not in a cylinder like a clarinet, but in a cone, widening ever outward. And bawa, bawa, spouting infinitely upward through an upturned, swollen, golden bell, rimmed like a glaxinia, flowering in Saxe's Belgian imagination. In Saxe's Belgian imagination, and in the unfathomable matrix of mothers and fathers. A genius, graven, humming into the cells of the body. Or saved cupped in the resonating grail of memory. Memory changed and exchanged. Memory changed and exchanged as in the trading of brasses, pearls, ivory, molasses, calico, and slaves. Ivory, molasses, calico, and slaves. Slave laborers and slave girls two cousins in a royal family of Niger, known as the birds or hawks. Christendom, in Christendom, one cousin's child becomes a, quote, favorite Negro, end quote, ennobled, ennobled by the decree of the Tsar. And he founds a great family, a line of courtiers, generals, and dandies, including the poet Pushkin. The poet Pushkin. Pushkin killed in a duel concerning his wife's honor, while the other cousin sails in the belly of a slave ship to the port of Baltimore, where she is raped and dies in childbirth. But the child, the infant, will marry a Seminole, and in the next chorus of time, their child fathers a great hawk or bird with many followers, among them this great-grandchild of the Jewish manager of a Pushkin estate. grandchild of the Jewish manager of a Pushkin estate blowing his American breath out into the wiggly tune, the wiggly tune uncurling its triplets and sixteenths, the Ginza samba of breath and brass, the reed vibrating as a valve, the ether, the unimaginable wires and circuits of an ingenious box here in my room in this house built a hundred years ago while I was elsewhere. It is like falling in love. It is like falling in love. The atavistic imperative of someone, voice, or face. The skill, the copper filament, the golden bell full of notes twirling through their invisible element from Rio to Tokyo. 
ratio and gathering speed in the variations as they tunnel the twin haunted labyrinths of stirrup and anvil echoing here stirrup and anvil echoing here in the hearkening instrument of my skull his american breath the vibrating valve the ether the flowery imagination the gloxinia raped in childbirth and the seminal will marry the infant. And in the next course of time, who knows? Now we've come to uh, possibly my favorite part of the plan. Um, I'm going to sit down and listen with you while Stan Strickland and Steve Hunter, no longer Steve Hunter, uh, the former Steve Hunter, Steve Hunt, they will play an instrumental together, a composition of Steve's, and uh, I will listen with you.
And another, uh, trying to show the difference between simply re hearing the poem and hearing the poem in relation to music, um, I'll read another poem to you. You could say a cappella, you could say that I would if I were giving a poetry reading at a university. And um, then the band will do it with me. The poem is called Samurai Song. Samurai Song. When I had no roof, I made audacity my roof. When I had no supper, my eyes dined. When I had no eyes, I listened. When I had no ears, I thought. When I had no thought, I waited. When I had no father, I made care my father. When I had no mother, I embraced order. When I had no friend, I made quiet my friend. When I had 
no enemy, I opposed my body. When I had no temple, I made my voice my temple. I have no priest, my tongue is my choir. When I have no means, fortune is my means. When I have nothing, death will be my fortune. Need is my tactic. Detachment is my strategy. When I had no lover, I courted my sleep. When I had no supper, my eyes dined. When I had no eyes, I listened. When I had no ears, I thought. When I had no thought, I waited. When I had no father, I made care of my father. When I had no mother, I embraced order. When I had no friend, I made quiet my friend. When I had no enemy, I opposed my body. When I had no temple, I made my voice my temple. I have no priest. My tongue is my choir. When I have no means, fortune is my means. When I have nothing, death will be my fortune. Need is my tactic. Detachment is my strategy. When I had no lover, I courted my sleep. Ooh, 
destiny my roof when I had no supper my eyes dined when I had no eyes I listened when I had no ears I thought when I had no thought I waited when I had no father I made care my father when I had no mother I embraced order when I had no friend I made quiet my friend when I had no enemy I opposed my body when I had no temple I made my voice my temple I have no priest my tongue is my choir when I have no means, fortune is my means. When I have nothing, death will be my fortune. Need is my tactic. Detachment is my strategy. When I had no love, had no lover. I courted. I courted my sleep. Thanks so much. We'll do, we'll do one more poem for you. Um, and uh, we'll do, it's the poem that um, I started off my poetry reading this afternoon with this poem called Rhyme. And uh, the contrast here is just for anybody who was around then. And uh, this will be the last poem. Thank you very much for the hospitality. I'll say again how grateful I am to these uh, musicians. And here is our uh, uh, closer Rhyme. Rhyme. Air, an instrument of the tongue. Air, an instrument of the tongue. The tongue, an instrument of the body. Air an instrument of the tongue, the tongue an instrument of the body, the body an instrument of the spirit. Air an instrument of the tongue, the tongue an instrument of the body, the body an instrument of the spirit, the spirit a being of the air.
bird the medium of its song. Each bird the medium of its song, and each song a world, a containment, like a hotel room, ready for us guests who inherit our compartment of time there. In the Joseph Cornell box, among ephemera as its element. The preserved bird, the preserved bird, a study in spontaneous elegy, the parrot, art, mortal in its cornered sphere. Each room a stanza rung in a laddered filament, in a laddered filament clambered by all us unsteady chambered spirits that climb it, each one reciting, I too was here. A laddered filament clambered by all us unsteady chambered spirits that climb it, each one reciting, I too was here. I too was here. Each one reciting, I too was here. I too was here in a room, a rhyme, a song, in the box, in books. Each element, an instrument, the body still straining to parrot, the spirit, the being of the air, air an instrument of the tongue. The tongue, an instrument of the body. The body, an instrument of spirit. The spirit, a being of the air. In a room, a rhyme, a song, a box, in books. Each one reciting, I too was here. Thank you all very much. Steve Hunt, Stan Strickland, Robert Pesky.